Today uh, I'm going to talk about data capture from images. Um, we're, we sort of are going to do big uh, discussions on workflows tomorrow, so I'll start to introduce the idea of how we've been doing this sort of thing. Um, but this is more concentrated on once you have specimen images. This is going to be broken up into, um, I'll give an introduction to the whole topic, and then Kim's going to do a live demo of how we actually um, work on a specimen by specimen basis with using sort of um, tools to take data directly from the images. This is sort of a, um, it's a change, it's a shift from the way we usually used a database where you would go to a cabinet, pull one folder of specimens and take the first specimen, database the whole thing, move to the next specimen, database the whole next label and move on. And so We'll talk about that a little bit tomorrow, but this will sort of introduce the new ways we're sort of doing workflows in botany. And I must say most of this work, or all of this work, is done primarily by other people at the New York Botanical Garden Herbarium. The whole staff is involved in this on some level, but primarily Stephen Gottschalk and Kim Watson, um, who have done the, the most of the thinking so far. So I'd like to introduce you to a few terms I'll be using very regularly in this talk. Um, the first one being optical character recognition. Christiana um, mentioned it earlier. Well, I'll typically refer to it as OCR. And this is basically, uh, the simplest way to put it is the conversion of an image of text to actual text to make it a machine readable format. So on this side, this is just an image file, um, not actual text. So how do we get a computer, if we want to break this up into database fields, is there a way to take this text and convert it to actual text? And um, what we're using here for a certain number of tools are OCR software tools to do this. Uh, the first two, Abbey Fine Reader and OmniPage, are um, proprietary. You have to purchase those. But there are a number of free OCR software programs out there. If you Google OCR software, you'll find a bunch of others. These are few are listed here. Tesseract is a big one people have been using. But there are a lot of options out there, and it's really um, throw some images through some OCR software and see what kind of results you get. So now that we have this big mass of text, this is all combined together in one field, uh, what do we do with it? How do we get this into a um, database field, into a better usable format? But we're going to have to look at this and try to distinguish what part of the text is being used for, which, for what purpose. And certain strings can have multiple roles on a label. So a person could be the collector, it could be the determiner, or it could be the author of a scientific name. But names of people can also be used as locations. So in this example, uh, Donnelly and Humboldt, those are names of people potentially. But in this label, they're actually being used as location fields. Barnaby here on this label, also another Name. Actually, one of the things you can see here is uh, a problem in the OCR output. This says, um, it's supposed to be Barnaby, B-A-R-N-E-B-Y, but the R-N close together made it an M in the OCR output. So one of the big things here, you'll see even on really nice, uh, well-typed and formatted labels, you're still going to have some OCR errors. This one actually turned out really well, but uh, keep in mind that the cleanup side of OCR text is also something to factor in. So we need to figure out how, how do we tell the difference? Which one of these is the collector? If you're a computer or if you are um, dealing with just this group of text, how do you pull out this, uh, the fields that you're looking for? We also have scientific names. Um, so you have the actual, this actual specimen is Astragalus persei. Um, but we have another full scientific name on the label as part of the habitat. So it's growing with Artemisia. So the scientific names, you know, you have to distinguish between the current name, maybe there are older names on the label, multiple determinations, part of the habitat, or even hosts. A lot of our fungal collections have host plant associations with them too. And finally, also location strings. So this is a collection in the United States and two states are listed on here, uh, Nevada and New York. But this is actually from, collected in the state of Nevada, but it's a New York Botanical Garden label. So the OCR, if you're running it against an authority file of 
place names, you're going to pull out New York and Nevada as states. But only Nevada is useful as the collection state. So these are a lot of things to think about when you're uh, dealing with OCR output. So how do we use computers to help us with this? And this is where the concept of natural language processing comes in. And this is, in terms of specimen databasing, we are using, um, the goal is to use natural language processing to use computers to assist humans with parsing the OCR text into um, database fields. And what has to be done is to actually have programmers write algorithms to identify data elements in the text string and parse them into the appropriate data fields. So this requires uh, definitely some technical people to really go through all of the options and write these algorithms. But the, once you get started, you can actually use all of the authority files, things we talked about yesterday, as um, a lookup list for these algorithms. So you can say, well, these are scientific names. So anytime um, you see these strings on a label, parse that into a scientific name field. Especially for any geography, you can put a whole country name list. So anytime you see any one of these terms um, for country, those can be parsed into a country field. So you can actually do a lot of work with authority files um, to help with this natural language processing. You can also train um, a computer to look for a defining text string before a name to identify what field it should go into. Uh, a good example is for collectors, at least in English, a lot of times on, on newer labels you'll put COL period before a collector name. So you can teach a computer anytime you see this beginning and a following with a name, that name should go into the collector field. Same with DET for determiners. And there's a whole bunch of others and you can train it for any other l uh, languages too. So if there's a defining string of text before um, a, a string that should go into a text field, you can train the, the computers to look for those and then parse them automatically. You can also look for pattern matching in label formats. A lot of older labels were always in the exact same format. It have a specific header and then a lot of handwriting, but then the footer is usually has the collector name in it in the bottom left-hand corner, say. And you can say, well, anytime you see this header, look in the bottom left-hand corner for the collector. And so there are a lot of different things you can use for very specialized uh, specific label sets to use computers to help with OCR. And this is a really hot topic right now and a lot of work is being done. So this is only touches on some of the things that are, are being looked at, but I'll get into more where we can look for more information uh, or join working groups to help with this. So we looked at a really nice clean label to begin with, but even one of these older labels, as I mentioned with pattern matching, um, you can see what this heading is always put on these labels of rights from Cuba. And you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, right comes out with the, with the date string very well. You can't read any of this in here. It's even hard to see the handwriting uh, as is. But at least you can pull out all of these records because in the OCR format, you can see certain terms are always coming out correctly. Though the older labels also lead to other issues, so it's not all all that easy. You, know, you have these specimens with multiple, um, multiple collections per sheet, so you have three separate barcodes, three separate labels, you try to OCR this and you'll get a mess. So actually you need a way to pre-sort your images before you go to OCR to say, well we have to crop these out, three labels out separately. So I'm going to talk more specifically about the OCR digitization workflow that we're using for a lot of our herbarium digitization projects to get images ready to go into this workflow. So we're not cataloging specimens in the traditional sense anymore. We are going in and creating skeletal records of herbarium specimens. We've, we try to curate uh, initially because the only thing we're putting on on specimen database records up front is the file as name. We want to be able to find these specimens somehow. So we're using, we're entering the name by hand uh, as a first step. So we try to get all the specimens under the currently accepted names if possible. Some groups are a little bit too big for that, but we're trying. So then what you do is you pull all specimens from a single taxon and you barcode every specimen. So uh, Kim here has laid out 
all the specimens from a, a single species. You quickly put a barcode on every single one. And then in the database, you say, okay, starting with barcode number one to barcode number 100, create 100 records automatically with this filed as name. And so you automatically create 100 records all at once. Um, you go to the next species that might have 20 records to create from this barcode number to this barcode number 20 records. So then we're mass creating multiple records all at once and just creating a huge list of um, specimens. This is actually a way to sort of index your whole collection. Even though you're not doing full data entry, you're at least getting an index to all the taxa you have in your collection. And this process is taking us on average about 100 skeletal records an hour. Um, for groups with a lot of specimens per species, we actually do a couple hundred an hour. But if you have, you know, only 10 or 20 specimens per taxon, it, it'll go a little bit slower. So that's all the data entry we do up front. Then the specimens go to get imaged. And I'm not going to go into detail here because Kim's going to spend a whole day talking about imaging. But um, we're using these light boxes to image every single specimen. Um, and every image that's being produced is getting the barcode number uh, at that time. So we'll have a barcode number in our skeletal record and a barcode number on the image file we're creating. And we're ex doing about 90 exposures an hour uh, at this point. Some of our, we have some staff people that are going up to 150 specimens an hour. So depending on the, the types of collections you're working with, this is getting faster and faster. Then we process the images. Um, we do a lot of batch processing Lightroom. Again, Kim's going to talk about this um, on Friday, so I won't go into too much detail. And then we take the skeletal records and we link up the records of the barcode number, the scientific file DAS name, um, and an image file. So these are all together in our database, and that's all the information we have at this point. Then we prepare, once we've created, so the camera has originally taken a very high quality image and we've then converted those images to JPEGs. And we're gonna use those JPEGs to process, um, to run through OCR software to create the text. And there are certain things you can do at this point to speed up um, OCR um, conversion. So most of the time, although not all the time, but most of the time, you're gonna get a label in the bottom right-hand corner. So if you crop the, the specimens to this <coughs> right-hand corner, you're dealing with a much smaller image file at the time. So it'll load through the OC so OCR software much more quickly. Also, it then prevents, if someone has written something on the sheet elsewhere, if there's a number not related to the collection somewhere else, it sort of cuts that out and prevents more OCR errors. You can also convert these images to grayscale. Um, by creating more contrast in your image file, you're going to allow the OCR software to recognize um, characters much more easily. So then, once we have our image files ready, so we may have, you might put the whole image through or you may crop it just to that section. We run everything through Abbey Fine Reader. Uh, it's not free, but it's not terribly expensive. Um, and we use the corporate edition because it allows batch processing. So we may get a thousand images ready, load it through the Abbey software, and it'll produce a thousand text files of, of data for us. As it processes each file, it creates a file of text named automatically with the barcode number so that we can then link the text up back up to the database record. And we have options, and Kim will go into this in the demo a little bit more later, but there are certain options you can use before you run the software, or as you run a few records, you can tr start to train Abby to recognize certain characters that are constantly in your data set. Um, something like ligatures in certain titles, you can say, uh, when anytime you see this, do this. And there are a lot of examples of how you can train Abby to work with special characters. You could also ask Abby to crop your labels for you, um, set certain resolutions, you can set uh, languages. So if all your labels are going to be in French, you can tell it up front, all these labels are going to be in French, so output, um, try to um, match with that. Or we've actually, we usually tell it to auto select tech um, language, because for certain projects, we, we've been doing this a lot for a Caribbean project, so a lot of those labels could be in Spanish, or in French, or English. <coughs> 